AMD's next gen is getting better and better. I mean, this is getting wild. But before I get to that, Microsoft just made Windows way worse. Nvidia needs to address this, and RX 10,000 could be AMD's Zen moment for GPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. But first, really quickly, I'll just go ahead and tell you that it's Amazon's Prime Big Deal Days events. I usually go over these every year, but there's a lot that I need to cover today, so instead I'll have some links to them down below. They absolutely have some fantastic deals, and the sale is almost over, so make sure to check that out now. Either way, those links are affiliate links, which means they don't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, I have further proof that Microsoft Microsoft is hell bent on making Windows worse. And this one is a little personal for me because in a new Insider Preview build, Microsoft explicitly mentions that removal of quote, local only commands and says that known mechanisms for bypassing online sign-ins are being addressed. Oh, oh no. It requires every user to log into their Microsoft account or they'll end up skipping, quote, critical setup screens. I mean, whose fault is it that these screens are critical anyway? That's, of course, Microsoft. But anyway, apparently this will eventually crash the out-of-box experience, forcing the user to start over. It says you must be connected to the internet throughout to, quote, ensure device is set up correctly. So yeah, I obviously review hardware sometimes, and that means I have to reinstall Windows very often. As many of you know, starting with Windows 11 Home, then Pro, Pro, you're required to sign into an account when installing Windows, though there were some things that sort of got you out of this, but not anymore. Either way, that of course means you need the internet. Unfortunately, for a while I wasn't able to use LAN, long story as to why, but just know that I couldn't, so a lot of times I would use the Wi-Fi adapter that came with the motherboard, but it almost always needed a driver before it would even work. It was a pain. And I'm now hardwired in, so it's not an issue. Issue, but this requirement is completely absurd. No one wants this. Microsoft knows no one wants this, but they just don't care. Obviously, it forces users to make Microsoft accounts. They love that, but this really is getting annoying to say the least. And honestly, until people start canceling subscriptions, stop using Microsoft products, things like that, they will continue to do it. Next up, if your desk setup looks like this, I just found the perfect solution to completely transform it into a clutter-free haven of gaming, work, or anything you do at your desk. And it's all thanks to this video's sponsor, Ugreen. And what I'm talking about is the new Ugreen 100 watt desktop charger. It's a six in one charging station with four USB-C and two USB-A ports, allowing you to fast charge up to six devices at the same time. Not only that, but it delivers up to 65 watts from a single USB-C one or C2 port. And it can charge a MacBook Air M2 from zero to 51% in just 30 minutes. It also comes with this AC extension cords so you can put it anywhere on your desk. Plus, its wildly small design means you barely notice it on your desk. Oh, and don't forget to check out Ugreen's new 45 watt charger for just $19.99 or their new 10,000 milliamp hour power bank for just $16.99. And if you use my links in the description, you can get up to 40% off on Ugreen products with their Prime Day deals. But hurry before they're gone. And speaking of companies not changing, it's happening again and again and again and again. At this point, Nvidia has got to say something about their melting connectors because there are now two new users that have melting, not just regular 16 pin connectors, but MSI's own yellow tip connector. You can see here that it has the yellow pins. This is specifically so you can make sure that it's fully inserted. And yet, like I said, two different people have now had theirs melt. You can see this first one. It says, my PC started crashing under load the last few days. Troubleshot everything, including swapping to a different PSU and still 
kept happening with black screens on reboots. Unplug the connector to see it was visibly burned, which explains the crashes. Now, apparently, at least this one, the connector wasn't one that's like 16 pin to 16 pin. It was the 12 e 2 by 6 cable that actually attaches to a standard 8 pin wiring. So like they state, maybe they did something like they use the daisy chained 8 pin cables. You know, some of these will have one 8 pin and then it splits off into two. You do not want to use that single one as two different 8 pin connectors. You really want to use that as one 8 pin. But regardless, honestly, at this point, even if that is why they shouldn't allow it to happen. It should be able to tell, okay, this is not correct, not turn on the computer or something to at least let them know. And obviously we don't even know if that's the case. Ultimately, Nvidia's last statement on this, as far as I can tell, is purely to blame the users. But then even before the 5090 came out, they released the updated 12E 2x6 connector that pulled the sense pins back so it wouldn't turn on unless it was plugged all the way in. So clearly they knew that there was an issue with the design. Now, you could argue that this was just an extra safety feature and Nvidia claimed that this wouldn't happen with the 5000 series. Yet here we are. It's still happening. This update wasn't enough. Nvidia, something has to be done. And next up for today, RX 10,000 could seriously be AMD's Zen moment for their GPUs. In my last video, I discussed a new deal with AMD and OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT, and the fact that this was such a big deal that it meant AMD had broken through Nvidia's monopoly. We're talking 6 gigawatts of AI compute capacity, which is a deal worth tens of billions of dollars, and they're starting with AMD's upcoming MI450. And in that video, I quickly touched on the fact that the MI450 must be very good. And because it's said to be based on the same architecture as AMD's next-gen gaming cards, it could be good news for those as well. Especially because, let's not forget that OpenAI almost certainly knows exactly what NVIDIA is planning to offer with their next-gen. So if NVIDIA was much better, this likely would have never happened. Well, during the editing of that video, I noticed some pretty wild claims from AMD that were made during an AI conference earlier in the year. And it made me look into this a little further. I have no clue how I missed some of these slides in the past, but AMD is making some unbelievable claims about their future accelerator. For example, as you can see here, they have a timeline of performance on some of their recent accelerators, showing a steady increase in performance until you get to their just launched MI350. 55X. And then there's a huge line with their upcoming MI400 series. In fact, AMD is claiming a whopping 10 times more performance compared to their just launched MI355X. So this makes a lot of sense out of that new deal with OpenAI. And like I mentioned, don't forget that AMD themselves have outright stated that their next-gen cards will be based on the same uDNA architecture, meaning this is based on the same thing as their gaming cards. Now, that doesn't mean we can expect a 10x difference or anything like that. This is compute, and at least part of it likely comes from lower precision compute cores and things like that, but this absolutely makes the leaked specs that we've seen look more and more accurate. And this could in fact be AMD's Zen moment for compute and their gaming next gen. Of course, time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, AMD's next-gen Ryzen 10,000, or whatever AMD ends up calling it, is said to be even better than what we originally thought. If you remember, I discussed a recent video from High Yield, who believed that AMD's next-gen CPUs could come with a new interconnect called Sea of Wires. This is something that they actually did with their new Ryzen Max APUs, and it would mean a much faster interconnect between chiplets, so latency would be massively reduced. Remember that latency is one one of the biggest issues with splitting up dyes like AMD's Zen architecture does. There are big benefits like high yield rates, easier scalability, etc. But when one die needs to communicate with the other, a big problem comes from the time it takes to make that communication. So fixing that would be a huge upgrade for AMD CPUs, maybe even bigger than adding more cores or raising clocks, which is why this is such a big deal. The issue is that some commenters were concerned that this would mean a big price increase for next-gen 
Horizon, and maybe even that AMD would be forced to move their 3D V-Cache back on top of the die. Remember that the big reason clocks on Ryzen 9000 XRD is so much faster than last gen is because they moved the 3D V-Cache under the chiplet. Well, according to a new video from Moore's Law is Dead, while AMD will be using a different interconnect with next gen Ryzen, they won't be using C of wires. Instead, AMD is using a silicon bridge die under the CCDs. And this is also a huge deal because it will massively lower the latency and everything else, but without the potential downsides of C of wires. And he seems to be very confident about this. Though, to be fair, I believe High Yield was more or less assuming this would be the case based on past chips. Some outlets seem to suggest that this was a fact, and I should have made it more clear that it was likely speculation. But really, with anything that isn't announced by the company themselves, you want to at least take it with a bit of salt. With that said, Moore's Law is Dead also shared this information from a source of his about this new interconnect. According to him, their new interconnect would not cause any issues with 3D vCache, and while it may be slightly more expensive than current gen, it wouldn't be big at all. The interconnect has been used in the MI200 accelerator, and it's not all that expensive. In fact, AMD is planning to use it across multiple next-gen lineups. Basically, AMD's next-gen Ryzen is looking better by the day. Moore's Law is Dead is even claiming that we could be looking at a Zen 2 moment. Ultimately, whichever interconnect it is, next-gen should scare Intel.